If you're getting an electric car, understanding the basics of EV charging is essential. Electric cars are great. I would never go back to paying for petrol, but the experience is best when you understand charging speeds, costs, and connectors. Don't worry, this is simple stuff. In a few minutes, I'll give you everything you need to know to charge like a boss. I'm Finn Peacock, chartered electrical engineer, founder of Solar Quotes, and owner of two EVs. Let's get charging. Throughout this video, I'll talk about power measured in kilowatts, power, kilowatts. It's how quickly you charge your car. Think of it as charging speed. Home charging works at speeds from about two kilowatts, the same as a toaster, up to 22 kilowatts, which is the same as an industrial pizza oven. No matter how fast your charger, the maximum charging speed is actually determined by your car. The maximum speed this Mini and this Tesla can charge at is 11 kilowatts with a home charger. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes. What does it cost to charge an EV? For some context, the typical petrol car gets mm, around 10 kilometers of range from one liter of petrol. That's 10 liters of fuel to drive 100 kilometers. 10 liters costs about 20 bucks or even more if you use diesel like this beast. An efficient EV gets seven kilometers of range from every kilowatt hour of electrical energy in the battery. That works out as 14 kilowatt hours of energy to drive 100 kilometers. If you charge from the grid and pay 30 cents a kilowatt hour, it'll cost you about $4.20 to drive 100 kilometers. So driving on electricity from the grid is nearly five times cheaper than buying petrol. Nice. Now, some people will claim that charging from solar means you can drive for free. Not quite. If you get a feed-in tariff for your solar and you choose to charge your car with the solar instead of exporting it to the grid, then the cost of electricity becomes the foregone feed-in tariff, typically eight cents per kilowatt hour. So that's $1.12 to drive 100 kilometers compared to $20 with petrol. That's like paying 11 cents per liter of fuel. So how much solar should you get if you want to solar power your EV? For most Aussies, I recommend at least 10 kilowatts of solar panels to comfortably charge on cheap solar energy throughout the year. On my own roof, I had a six kilowatt system installed back in 2014. After getting the two EVs and suffering the horror of getting power bills again, I quickly added another 14 kilowatts a few months ago. Just put on as much solar as you can reasonably fit and afford. It's not as expensive as it sounds, thanks to how the solar rebate works. And it makes even more sense when you have an EV and batteries. If you have a home battery, avoid regularly charging your car from it. Home batteries are best used for powering loads that can't be time shifted, like your lights, your late night TV, and cooking dinner. Your EV has a battery, so the times you charge it can be flexible. If you need to charge overnight, charge from a cheap overnight tariff and use your expensive home battery for your home. Your home battery will last longer that way too. It is possible with some electricity plants to get paid to use electricity when there's a surplus of renewable energy in the grid. If you set up your car to charge at these times, you can literally get paid to fill up your car. Yes, I said you can literally get paid to refuel. That's quite a turnaround from queuing up to get a few cents per litre discount on your petrol. A home EV charger is a straightforward device. Its job is to ask a car if it can accept any charge, and if it can, safely send power to the vehicle until the charger is told to stop. The charger can't push power to the car faster than the car's request, that would be dangerous. Most cars have a simple timer, so you can program them to only charge during off-peak periods. To take advantage of this, you need to be on a time of use electricity tariff. Time charging makes sense, but there are even cheaper and greener ways to charge your car. A solar smart charger can be configured to only charge when you have surplus solar. So that solar goes in the car instead of out to the grid. And, if you're on a special plan with electricity prices that change every five minutes, the right smart charger can only charge when prices are cheap or negative. It's that getting paid to charge thing again. I love it. Charging when prices are negative also means you'll be almost certainly charging from renewables through your grid connection, which is gonna make Greta happy. You down with OCPP? Yeah, you know me. Yeah. 
Sorry, that one's for the old school hip hop lovers. If you decide to install a charger on your home, future-proof it by getting one that's OCPP compatible. OCPP stands for Open Charge Point Protocol. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, but this is an open standard that means it can talk to other OCPP compatible devices and work with third party services. For example, some electricity retailers may offer cheaper EV charging tariffs if they can control your charger with OCPP. Or you may be able to use OCPP to take advantage of the getting paid to charge thing I keep banging on about. But for me right now, the biggest benefit of having an OCPP compatible charger like this one is integrating it with this excellent Aussie app called Charge HQ. Charge HQ is a brilliant app. It uses OCPP to talk to your charger. It can talk to your car. It can talk to your home battery if you've got one. And it can talk to your electricity retailer. And it can, can coordinate all those devices so you only charge from really cheap or free electricity. Electricity comes in two main forms, AC and DC. Everything plugged into the grid uses 230 volts AC. A home EV charger controls how much 230 volt AC electricity goes into your car. Here's a teardown of an EV charger I bought. As you can see, there's not much to them. They're pretty simple devices. Now the box that this comes in isn't technically a charger because all it does is provide a regulated flow of AC electricity. To be technically correct, I should call these boxes on the walls EVSE. That stands for Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. But that would confuse anyone who isn't an electrical engineer. So I'm calling these devices chargers at the risk of angry emails from retired engineers. Now, here's the thing. Inside your car, the battery charges with DC, not AC. There's a device inside the car converting the AC from your home to the DC electricity the battery can handle. Those devices have a hard power limit on the AC-DC conversion. 11 kilowatts AC is the limit for many electric vehicles, such as my Mini Cooper SE or the popular Tesla Models 3 and Y. Some cars can charge as fast as 22 kilowatts at home, but they are rare. Now, if batteries charge from DC electricity, are there DC chargers? Yes, there are, and they can charge much faster, but you won't find one in a house. DC chargers go far beyond what the typical home can afford. They start around $100,000 to install, and you need a monster power supply, so you're unlikely to install one at your home. And if you charge from them too often, your car battery will degrade faster. So you should charge at home most of the time because it's cheaper and better for your car. But fast DC chargers are great for quickly topping up on long trips. These DC chargers are much faster than your home charging. Where a hardwired home charger typically charges from seven to up to 22 kilowatts, a DC charger can charge from 50 kilowatts like these ones, right up to 350 kilowatts if you're using one of the higher powered models. But that does depend on what your car can handle. My Mini, for example, can charge at a maximum of 50 kilowatts DC. The Tesla charges at about 100 kilowatts DC. One thing to bear in mind with DC charging is that you won't get those speeds for the whole charge. As the battery fills up, the speed will slow right down and that's to protect your battery. If you're charging on the run, it's a good idea to plan to only have to charge to up to 80 or 90 percent and that'll save you hanging around at the charger for ages. These ChargeFox DC chargers behind me can charge any recent model EV. I've just opened up the ChargeFox app to charge the Tesla from the ChargeFox charger and it's telling me that the charger is out of order. Now, unfortunately, that is far too common with non-Tesla fast chargers. I know for a fact that this particular charger here has been out of order for something like three months. So I'm gonna jump in the Tesla, drive 20 yards across the way, and charge up at the Tesla superchargers. So as is all too common, I can't charge at the third party fast charger. So I've come across the car park to this Tesla V2 supercharger. Now the V2 version two superchargers are by far the most common Tesla superchargers in Australia. They can charge your car at up to 120 kilowatts if your car can take it. Now the great thing about Tesla superchargers is their abundance. They're in lots of really good places and there are lots of them and their reliability. It's very rare that you see a Tesla supercharger not working. One of the downsides is Teslas are so bloody popular it can be hard to get an empty slot in the metros. Good news if you don't drive a Tesla is that Tesla Australia have just announced they're opening up some of their superchargers to non-Tesla EVs. Now the bad news is it's not all Tesla superchargers. So to find out which ones are compatible, you've got to download the Tesla app, you've got to create an account and you've got to have a look on the map.
As a footnote, I came back to this exact charge station two weeks later and every single non-Tesla charger was out of order. The industry has settled on jargon to describe slow, medium and fast charging. Being engineers, they decided to call it level one, level two and level three charging. Boring. First up, level one charging, which will add about 10 kilometers of range per hour to an EV. Level one chargers are simply a cable and power brick that connects to a standard power point. This one came with my wife's electric mini. This one came with the Tesla, but Tesla has stopped shipping them with their cars as standard. Now, if your car manufacturer does not include a level one mobile connector like these with your car, make sure you buy one and put it in the boot. Even if you never use it at home, it will save you bacon one day. These bricks charge at about two kilowatts. Like I said, that's about 10 kilometers of range every hour it's plugged in. It's painfully slow. The Mini will take about 15 hours to fully charge with its level one charger. The Tesla will take over 30 hours with this plugged into a standard socket. That's gonna hurt. But some level one power bricks can charge at higher speeds. Depending on the manufacturer, your device may have an interchangeable plug. The Mini doesn't. It's a slow standard socket or nothing. But the Tesla, it does, yay! As standard, the Tesla comes with a regular 10 amp plug and a 15 amp plug. What's the difference? The 15 amp plug has a wider earth pin and it needs a special socket with thicker wiring that can handle all 15 amps. So if you've spent any time at all in a caravan park, you're gonna be familiar with a 15 amp socket. A 15 amp socket will let you charge at three kilowatts instead of two kilowatts, so that's 50% faster than the standard socket. Still quite slow though. Now, if you want to charge at home with 15 amps, you'll need to install a 15 amp socket where your car will park. I recommend you do this job properly with one of these industrial style sockets. Expect to pay about $500 for this installation. Now here's a tip for cheap, fast home Tesla charging. If you have a recent Tesla and you're lucky enough to have a three phase socket in your garage, you can buy third party tails that charge at about five to seven kilowatts just using your mobile connector. If you've got a small EV like the Mini, or you do very little driving and have an indoor or covered charging spot to protect the power brick from the weather, you may find that level one charger like this is all you need. But if you have a regular sized EV and you drive a reasonable amount, you'll probably find level one charging with a regular or even a 15 amp socket painfully slow. The solution is a level two charger with dedicated wiring back to your switchboard. Here at my own home, I have this Delta AC Max charger. Now I've been a big fan of Delta from my days working as an electrical engineer. I use their gear to control nuclear power stations, so I'm more than happy for it to control my home charging. Now I really recommend a proper hardwired charger like this if you have an EV. This style of level two charger comes in two main versions, single phase or three phase. If you've got a single phase supply to your house, the decision's made for you. Get a single phase charger. Single phase EV chargers charge at seven kilowatts and can add about 40 to 50 kilometers of range per hour. That would fully charge this car from empty in about five hours or the Tesla in about 10 hours. So you can be confident that you're gonna get an overnight charge. If you have a three phase supply, I highly recommend getting a three phase charger. The higher speed charging, it just makes life easier, especially if you keep forgetting to plug your car in like I do and you need to get charged ASAP. One thing almost everyone forgets about when they buy their first home charger is cable length. When I got my first home charger, I couldn't charge my car if it was parked in the second position. So when I got my new one, I bought what's called an untethered charger. As you can see, it comes without a charging cable and you can buy your own charging cable at the length you need. I needed a 10 meter charging cable to charge both cars, no matter how they were parked in my driveway. All electric cars sold in Australia since January 2020 come with an AC charging socket known as Type 2. It looks like this. This plug and this socket is used for level one and level two EV charging. So unless you've bought an old second-hand EV, you'll want a charger with a Type 2 plug like this. As for level three charging, that's simply another name for the fast DC charging I've already described. It's designed for fast, on-the-go top-ups. 
All Australian EVs sold since 2020 that are capable of level 3 DC charging will also have a second socket immediately below the Type 2 socket. This socket combination is called CCS for Combined Charging System. If I pull the bottom rubber cover off this Mini, all is revealed. Level 3 chargers use a monster plug like this to connect into the whole socket, top and bottom. The top pins, they're for talking to the car and the bottom pins, they're for pushing the DC power into the car at tens to hundreds of kilowatts. Public chargers can either be slowish level two or fast level three. If you're using a public level two charger like this one, they're great for topping up the juice when you're running some errands. Most public level two chargers require that you bring your own charging cable. So what you need to do is you need to jump online and you need to buy a type two to type two charging cable. And the crucial thing you need to know is you need to buy the three phase version, not the slightly cheaper single phase version. Because if you buy the single phase version, which looks exactly the same, if you use a three phase charger like this, you'll be constrained to single phase speeds. So I've got my charger in the boot. I'm going to plug in and I'm going to start charging. So here's my type two to type two cable. You put the small end in the charger. And you put the bigger end in your car. Then you need to get your app out. In this case, it's a charge Fox charger. You need to find the charger on the map. This is port B, I need to select port B. I need to unlock it. Green button starts flashing and I press the green button. The car, fingers crossed, will start charging. And it's charging the car. So one of the great things about level two public charges is often you get free parking and a very cheap charge. Now, before type two connectors came about, you had, you guessed it, type one connectors like this one. Now there's still quite a few type one chargers around and typically they've been installed by local councils. The good news is these are often free to use. The bad news is you will need an adapter to charge a modern EV with one of these. This takes your type one plug and converts it to a type, type two plug, which all modern EVs use, brought into Australia after January 2020. So the reason I spent $150 on an adapter cable like this is because there's a free charger with a type one plug on it at my favorite beach, Horseshoe Bay here in South Australia. So I can park the car for free, I can charge for free, and I can run in the sea and have a swim. So here's how you use it. Type one plug plugs in to the adapter cable and now you've got a type 2 plug on the end of your charging cable and that just plugs straight into the top of the CCS socket and yes we've got the green flashing light it's charging time for a swim Public level three fast chargers like this one are usually easy to differentiate compared to level two chargers like that one. And that's because they're massive. And of course, they have the monster plug that I showed you earlier. Now many public level three chargers also have one of these plugs, which is called a Chadamo. These are for the older school EVs. Ignore these connectors if your car was delivered from 2020 onwards. What does it cost to charge when you're away from home? Some level two chargers are actually free, especially the old ones with a type one connector. Most provided by accommodation and other venues are free too. If you do have to pay to use a level two charger, expect to pay around 25 to 35 cents per kilowatt hour. You'll use a credit card or you'll use an app. Level three chargers, the fast ones, they offer more than 25 kilowatts of charging speed. They are expensive. Expect to pay about 50 to 65 cents per kilowatt hour. That's about 10 times more expensive than self-consumed solar energy, but still half the cost per kilometer of a petrol car. So there you have it. Everything you need to know about charging EVs in Australia. And if you're looking to get an EV charger installed on your home, the safest way I know to do that is to get multiple quotes off reputable, highly vetted installers. And that's exactly what my website, SolarQuotes, can do for you. Simply go to solarquotes.com.au 
pop your postcode in the box, hit the button and leave the rest to me.